lecture we had discussed about the twisted pair and we have seen different types of twisted pairs okay so uh, we had also discussed about utp and stp so utp cat 3 and cat 5 are utp twisted pair cables because there was no shield on the top uh, on the top of it but uh, like there was another special type of twisted pair that was used by military that was stp in order to protect that wire because some uh, like enemies can cut that wire okay, so if there was a hard shield and it was very difficult for the enemy to cut that wire so that type, that's why to, twisting uh, that's why shield was used but it was unsuccessful and it was very bulky and expensive uh, that's why it was not continued later on so now we'll uh, go to a different type of uh, cable that is coaxial cable okay we'll uh, study a different type of cable that is coaxial cable all of you might have seen coaxial cable because all of you have uh, dish antennas at your home so the wires that are used in dish antennas are all coaxial cable okay uh, so you might have seen cable connecting the television set with dish antenna or the cables used by city cable network so they are actually what coaxial cables okay so um, these cables are the coaxial cables and are commonly used in this type of setups so coaxial cable is a stiff copper wire and is used uh, uh, core which is surrounded by an insulating material called clad okay so there is a braided mesh of conducting material around the insulator which in turn is covered by a protective plastic sheath you can see the picture out here there is a core that is covered by the, the clad okay and uh, clad is covered by the braided mesh of wire and that is again covered by a plastic sheath and what is core core is a copper wire okay and uh, so their uh, braided mass is also a type of wire and this is also a conducting material so there you can see two conducting materials are there and two insulators are there braided mass is one conducting material core is again one conducting material clad is the insulating material and plastic sheath also is an insulating material and also used as a cover okay so coaxial uh, cable is used in video transmission why because its bandwidth is very high so you can see a picture below that is showing a coaxial cable so let us go to the next slide there are different two types of coaxial cable basically baseband coaxial cable and broadband coaxial cable so let us discuss the properties of baseband coaxial cable it is a 50 ohm cable mainly used for the digital transmission the early dipole antenna had a certain impedance so on the basic of that basis of that the impedance matching transformers were built and 50 ohm 75 ohm were assigned according to that so these cables are used for applications which require frequency less than 4 kilohertz um, telephone systems use baseband coaxial cables. The cable length up to 1 km gives a data rate of 1 to 2 Gbps. Longer cables require more data rates and amplifiers can also be used in coaxial cables. So another class of coaxial cable is there that is called broadband coaxial cable. So it is a 75 ohm cable used for analog transmission. For early dipole antennas which had impedance of 300 ohm it was comfortable to build 4 ratio 1 impedance matching transformer so 75 ohm coaxial cable were built these types of coaxial cable can be seen in current day dish antenna wires and applications wider than 4 kilohertz can use broadband coaxial cable so that's why the name broadband connection these cables can be used for applications by 300 kilohertz 400 kilohertz can run up to like uh, 100 kilometers these cables are suitable for frequency division multiplexing so this is uh, these are some characteristics of broadband coaxial cable so you might have uh, heard like in your internet connection people say broadband why broadband because it increases the bandwidth of your connection okay and uh, it is also used for analog transmission like in telephones and all okay mainly it is used for video transmission because of its high bandwidth Okay, why 75 was chosen because of the impedance, okay. So, uh, because it was comfortable to build 4 ratio, 1 impedance. 
because the early dipole antennas had an impedance of 300 ohm. So these types of coaxial cable you can see in the so uh, today we are going to discuss a new topic that is fiber optics. Again, I had already told you like there are different type of guided media. So fiber optic is one of them. So it is a type of transmission medium where transmission transmission signals are nothing but light rays. Okay. So presence of light ray indicates a signal one binary signal one and absence of light ray indicates a binary signal zero. So in this type of transmission we need a light source and a transmission medium and a light detecting device. So a signal pulse forces the light source to generate light which travels to the transmission medium and falls on the light detector. So the detector initiates the electrical signal. Laser or LED can be used as source of light. So laser, if we use laser, it is very harmful for eyes. Okay. So instead of laser, we can use LED. It will be safe as compared to laser. Uh, so these are used as basically source of light from where light is emitted. So transmission is an ultra thin uh, glass fiber called fiber optic cable. That means the transmission medium is a ultra thin glass fiber. So from where the light ray will travel from that uh, transmission medium that is an ultra thin glass fiber. It is also called optical fiber. So uh, here I have drawn a picture of a optical fiber cable and I have also shown the way how the light travels. So you can see there are three angles. One is theta uh, I. Theta is angle of incidence. Another is theta RF. Theta RF is angle of refraction because when you send light in the optical fiber cable, so some of the light will be reflected back into the optical fiber cable and some of the light will refract to some other medium. Okay. So here angle of refraction is the light that uh, uh, with which uh, the angle with which the light is refracted to the uh, air or another medium and uh, some of the light using theta rv will reflect back into the uh, like uh, medium okay optical fiber medium now uh, here if you transmit this way you will lose information so what you have to do you have to keep on increasing theta i Time means angle of incidence. When we will keep on increasing angle of incidence, what will happen? Angle of refraction will keep on increasing and angle of uh, reflection will also be keep on increasing. So a time will come, the uh, angle of refraction will become zero and at that time the whole signal, that means the whole light, whole information that is in, in the form of a light will be reflected back into the optical fiber cable and that condition is called total internal reflection and the uh, angle at which the total in, uh, internal reflection occur is called critical angle. So you have to keep these things in mind. So next we will move to the next slide. So you can see the total in, uh, internal reflection in this optical fiber cable. So no, no ray is going out of this cable. So when a light ray is generated and passes through the fiber, a portion of the light may be refracted into the air medium and remaining portion may be reflected back into the fiber at the boundary between fiber and the air that I had already discussed. Light ray incident on the boundary at certain angle of incidence is called angle of incidence. Ray may refract into the air medium with an angle of refraction theta rf and some uh, ray will reflect back into the fiber with an angle of ref uh, reflection back that I have written. If the angle of incidence is increased to certain value, then instead of refracting into the air, the whole ray may reflect back into the fiber. So this value is called critical angle theta c. Light ray with an angle of incidence greater than that of angle of incidence wholly reflects back into the fiber, which is called total internal reflection that also I discussed. So this light ray may propagate inside the fiber without any loss of signal. So th this way, if um, communication in fiber optic cable occurs. Now fiber optic cables are classified into different types based on structure and mode of transmission. So depending upon structure, fiber optic cables are classified into step index fiber and graded index fiber. Uh, 
Uh, further, if we classify these cables on the basics of mode of transmission, we find two types of cable that is single mode fiber and uh, multi mode fiber. Okay. So, in multi mode fiber, light travel in different paths and single mode fiber told that single mode fibers are very much uh, like expensive than multi mode fiber. Okay. And uh, how does light travel from multi mode fiber? Light travel in different paths inside the fiber. Okay, and in case of single mode fiber, diameter of the fiber is reduced. Okay, so uh, in the last figure, you might have seen like there are different uh, like paths followed by the ray. Now, because if we, uh, if you uh, in reduce the diameter, so what will uh, happen? It will follow a single path. So that is the thing. Okay, you might have uh, you can see uh, very clearly in this figure. So fiber of tip cables. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, what you um, uh, like, uh, what you have seen here that fiber optic cables are classified into different types based on structure and mode of transmission. So, if we talk about uh, structure, then it is step index fiber and graded index fiber. So, no need to discuss these things in detail, just only know that uh, these are the classes. And uh, if we classify on the mode of transmission, we find a single mode and multi mode. So, there I have already explained why it is called single mode, why it is called multi mode. And all. So, uh, this is all about fiber optic cables. So, uh, we will proceed to uh, like unguided media that means where we do not need any wire. Okay. So, uh, this is a very interesting topic because here we are talking about a medium that we cannot see. Okay. That is why we call it unguided media because if uh, for layman like there is no medium like they think it is uh, one type of magic. Somebody don't don't even think think that why well, like they are talking using a mobile phone how they are is like uh, voice is going to uh, kilometers away thousands of kilometers away okay and what is the technology behind it so nobody bother about that they are like just using the technology okay but uh, as a computer scientist we should know you should also know because you are in the computer science subject. Okay, you are studying computer science subject. Okay, so you should know like uh, the technology behind the unguided media. Okay, so here you can see that there is no dedicated path in between two communication ends. Okay, and uh, that is why this type of uh, like medium is called unguided medium. Okay, unguided medium because there you can't see anywhere. You can't see any like uh, optical fiber cable or twisted pair cable or coaxial cable. No, no wire is there. Okay, uh, your uh, signal or information or voice is going in air. So that is why it is called uh, like unguided medium. So if we use this type of medium, there are several advantages. Okay, because you don't need to spend a okay, huge amount of money and efforts in establishing a net of wires in an area covering thousands of kilometers that is because a very uh, hectic task okay, to uh, like cover to cover a huge area with uh, like a net of wires a jumble of wires okay it becomes a very hectic task okay and it's very expensive task also okay so instead of that if we are not having any wire we are not uh, using anywhere then that will be very easy um, geographically the places that are very far uh, like uh, away so there also we can send messages so somebody suppose your friend is staying in hills and uh, communication is not very good out there so to uh, you uh, to establish or to establish a uh, like system of wires there is very tough task so instead of that if we can use the natural medium okay, that is already present in air. So, it is very easy for us to send a message. So, that is the significance of using guided media. So, uh, because this type of media is not affected by geographical constraints. Like I have already told you wherever your friend is located that does not matter. So, you can send messages very clearly. So, nowadays communications have become very easy. Using mobile phones, you can talk to your friend anywhere. Uh, if he is sitting on uh, the top of a hill or if he is uh, traveling through a ship in the middle of a sea, wherever your friend is there, you can talk to him. No, no need to use connect like wire there.
so you are always come uh, like connected with your friend using unguided media and this is the significance advantage of using unguided media okay so here we'll discuss many types of unguided media so we'll talk about radio transmission we'll talk about microwave transmission we'll talk about infrared transmission 